This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Friday, the 20th day of November in the year 2020. I'm Gordon Mosley. Here's what we're tracking tonight. Opposition leader Joe Harmon today said the APNU AFC coalition is outraged that the National Assembly and its committees have not been meeting since the passage of the national budget back in September. During his weekly press conference this afternoon, Mr. Harmon accused the government of stifling the work of the Assembly by not putting forward any business for a sitting. He said the parliamentary committees have also not been meeting. The fact that they are not providing information on which the National Assembly can be called, this is a matter of concern to us. In our view, it is an attack on democracy. And this, this attack on democracy is, is intensifying daily. We are, we are outraged by the fact that these committees are not meeting, that the National Assembly is not meeting. We have written to the clerk, we have spoken to him, and the feedback that we got from the, the clerk is that the government does not have items for the agenda, and so we have no date for the National Assembly to meet. Well, we have submitted several motions and so on, so we are business. The opposition leader said the APNU AFC has already submitted a number of motions and other items for the parliamentary agenda, and it is therefore ready to meet. And just as the government, the government side, um, they have days, their opposition days in the National Assembly as well. And we will press the National Assembly, press the clerk, we press the speaker to ensure that we have a sitting of the National Assembly. And Mr. Harmon announced today that he has written to the International Parliamentary Association and other parliamentary bodies on the situation in Guyana. But they can see the extent to which this regime is trying to stifle, um, stifle transparency and the kind of, of investigation which you have to do into the work of the government. The committees also, we, we have spoken about that. In fact, yesterday um, there was a meeting of the Parliament uh, Management Committee, but still that has been after a long time and after we keep pressing them for meetings. The Public Accounts Committee, well, we had written to the clerk about the Public Accounts Committee. Um, after almost two weeks, we got a response which was procedural in nature. The Parliamentary Management Committee is the only committee that recently had a meeting, which mostly dealt with procedural issues. Harmon said the opposition is eager for the Public Accounts Committee to get back to its work, which dates back to 2016. He said the government has been making lots of statements about when the APNU AFC was in government, and it would be good now for the committees to begin their work so that ministers and officials in the ministries could provide answers and clarifications. More news coming up in just a moment. Diana, we've been through it all. But as a people, we have weathered every storm and risen to every challenge. Because it is the people of Guyana that gives it its strength. All the people, regardless of race, class, or religion, we, we are one people, one strength. And now is our time. A time to rise. Together, we rise. Mobile Special and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Saul Guyana Inc. Mobile Special and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Saul Guyana Inc. Finally, Miss Pepper is here to tell you about Ravina's on Water Street and Anand's on Regent Street. Just received a fresh shipment of glassware for your kitchen. Mm -hmm. Drinking glassware have beautiful preserved design and are packed in gorgeous gift box. I leave to give to your friends, family, and others for Christmas. Ravina's and Anand's have unbeatable prices. Visit them at Ravina's on 70A Water Street or Anand's on 108 Regent Street or call 225-6595.
strong educational foundation is a key to successful learning. Global Technology combines award-winning curriculum with innovative technology and teacher support to help students reach their potential. Our online platform creates an engaging learning experience. Using any device, you can be a part of amazing class discussions, collaborate with others, and have access to virtual learning software. With our multiple payment methods, you will never have to leave home. Find out how global technology can allow you to learn anything, anywhere, at any time. Mobile Special and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Saul Guyana Inc. Mobile Special and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Saul Guyana Inc. Welcome back. While facing court action by the opposition over her dual citizenship status at the time of her appointment as a member of parliament, Tourism Minister Onej Waldron remains defiant that she did nothing illegal when she took the oath of office as a member of parliament. Speaking to reporters this morning, Minister Waldron said while she would prefer not to have a trial in the media, she maintains that a renunciation of her American citizenship took effect from the time she applied. My position has been and always has been that the act of renunciation is one that is a, is a unilateral act that when a citizen has done the legal standard is when a citizen has done all within that is within her power to renounce, which is what I did on the 18th by pay, making my fees, paying a quite substantial amount of fees, which is over 500,000 on the 27th of August, all of this before I swore in. And the legal standard is that the citizen has done all the, within her power to renounce, which is what I did. That is the standard for renunciation. The fact that I received my certificate two days after swearing in, in my opinion, does not, um, does, it cannot support the argument that I um, was there illegally. But based on U.S. Embassy documents provided to the National Assembly by the minister herself, she presented herself to the U.S. Embassy to renounce her American citizenship three days after she was already sworn in as a member of parliament. Questioned about that reality, the minister maintained that in her view, she did all that was within her power to renounce her citizenship before she took the oath of office as a member of parliament. I repeat that the legal standard is that the citizen ought to have done all that was in her power to renounce, which is what I did by indicating to the councillor on the 18th of August that I have renounced. I was, in the, I was informed that there was an administrative procedure that I had to follow in order to receive my certificate, which is what I received on the 4th, which is what I found on the 4th of, uh, of September. The Constitution of Ghana does not allow for holders of dual citizenship to become members of the National Assembly. While the provision was ignored by the major parties for decades, a ruling by the Supreme Court reinforced the provision. U.S. immigration attorneys have indicated that the act of renunciation in Waldron's case would have taken effect from the time she presented herself to the embassy, which was after she was already sworn in. The minister said she has not done anything illegally and intends to remain in the assembly. Earlier this week, the APNU AFC filed a court action seeking her removal as a member of parliament over the dual citizenship issue. The coalition maintains that at the time of her appointment and swearing in as a member of parliament, she was still a U.S. citizen. And that now means that she is currently sitting in the parliament illegally. 29 new cases of coronavirus were recorded as of midnight last night, according to the health ministry. 15 of the 29 new cases are from Region 4. The 29 new cases that have been recorded have pushed the total number of positive cases recorded in Guyana since March to 5,000. There are still 869 active cases in the country. Health Minister Dr. Frank Anthony reminded persons again to follow the COVID-19 guidelines and protect themselves and family, especially as the busy holiday season approaches. Well, what I can tell Guyanese is that um we haven't seen an application for vacation leave uh, from uh, COVID-19, right? So COVID-19 is still here and it's not going anywhere too soon. So if we are going to let down our guard, if we're not going to wear a mask, if we don't want to do social distancing, then a lot of people are going to get infected. It's simple as that. And um, 
we know that traditionally that people tend to um, increase their socialization during Christmas. People tend to increase their drinking during Christmas. People want to have family and friends over for Christmas. Those things in a pandemic um, should not be allowed. And if you want to remain safe, then you should use the common sense knowledge that we all have and ask your friends and family to hold on. They don't need to come over this Christmas. You don't need to go out and have a drink this Christmas, right? Um, abide by these rules. The government continues to come under criticism over the continuing spread of the coronavirus. The opposition has accused the government of not doing enough to stem the increase in new cases, especially by its non-enforcement of the COVID-19 regulations. Let's tell you now that the 26 Haitian nationals who were taken into protective custody by the government after the police launched a probe into allegations of people smuggling and trafficking remain in that protective custody, and they are not happy about that. The Ghana Police Force and the Ministry of Home Affairs have both remained tight-lipped on the issue, refusing to offer any comment or update. Today, a spokesman for the group of Haitians told News Source that they have been refused a request to meet with an attorney and to also meet with members of the Haitian Friendly Society in Guyana. They continue to be housed at the government facility in Berbice and have been complaining about the conditions there. The Haitians arrived in Guyana from Barbados just over a week ago. They were granted entry into the country for six months. However, days after they arrived, several of them were held by the police at a hotel, while another group was removed from a bus in Linden. The Ministry of Home Affairs later announced that police investigators were probing reports of possible people smuggling and trafficking in persons. The owner of the hotel where some of the Haitians were staying and the driver of the bus the other group was found in were initially arrested, but released without any charges. The Haitians believe they are being discriminated against and they are calling on CARICOM which has its headquarters in Guyana to make representation on their behalf. Haitians usually travel to Guyana to make their way across to Brazil to take up jobs there. This evening, the Guyana Police Force is reminding licensed firearm holders to always have their weapons secured in a safe and secured facility. The reminder follows two recent deaths involving teenagers. In one of the cases, a 15-year-old boy used his father's gun to take his own life, while in the other case, another 15-year-old was shot dead by a friend who was showing off his father's weapon. In a statement today, the Ghana Police Force said licensed firearm holders ought to know that one of the conditions under which the firearm license was issued is the provision of a safe and secured storage facility for the firearm and the ammunition when not in use. According to the police, firearm licenses carry a number of stipulated rules pertaining to the safety and use of the firearm and ammunition, including the fact that they are always kept out of the reach of children and that is the direct responsibility of the firearm holder. The statement added that licensed firearm holders are cautioned that a neglectful breach of one or more specific firearm safety rules spelled out on the license may lead to the revocation of the firearm license. Well-known medical doctor and university lecturer Dr. Wesley Torrington was discovered dead in his Roxanne Burnham Gardens home this morning. The 60-year-old man who served as a dean at the Lincoln Medical University in Guyana was last seen alive by a neighbor four days ago. At the time, the man who lived alone told his neighbor that he was unwell. It was the neighbor who decided to check on the doctor this morning after not seeing him over the past few days. When the neighbor did not get a response from the house, the police were summoned and the police discovered the body. The police in a report said there were no signs of forced entry into the house and there were also no signs of foul play. A post-mortem examination is to be done on the man's body. Across the region is coming up next.
Dalvac and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. Mobile Dalvac and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. Once again, and we encourage everybody to be safe. Between October 23rd and December 31st, buy your groceries and fuel from Falls, and you can win a Christmas hamper every week or your fuel purchase free. Just spend $3,000, complete the coupon, drop it in the box, and then listen for your name. And to make it even better, you can win a bumper hamper on Christmas Eve Day. Yes, our prices are great, the environment is safe, and everyone wins when you shop in the Falls Christmas promotion, Land of Canaan. We are legions of men standing strong, but never too proud to stoop and help someone. We must send a clear signal to all. Do right. Walk in upright ways, knowing that's what being a man is all about. And ever aware that things will only get worse when good men do nothing. Stand strong. Be the one to live right. But as a people, we have weathered every storm and risen to every challenge because it is the people of Guyana that gives it its strength. All the people, regardless of race, class, or religion, we, we are, are one, one people, people, one strength. And now is our time a time to rise. Together, we rise. Mobile Dalvac and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. Mobile Dalvac and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. Across the region right now, thousands of workers and students have been holding marches across Colombia to protest against the government of President Ivan Duque. Among their demands are improvements to health care, help for small businesses, and the basic wage for the unemployed. The authorities have not publicly commented on the latest marches, which took place in several major cities. The demonstrations are the latest in a series of anti-government protests that began last year. Demonstrators have also been calling for more protection for rural communities where the murder rate has been increasing because of the presence of illegal armed groups vying for control of drug trafficking operations. At least seven people died during demonstrations in the capital Bogota in September, held in response to the death of a man who was pinned to the ground and repeatedly tasered by police. Mexico has moved a step closer to legalizing marijuana for recreational use after lawmakers passed a bill aiming at curbing violent crime linked to drug trafficking. The country's upper house of parliament, the Senate, backed the bill by 82 votes to 18 yesterday. The Senate said the bill's objective was to reduce organized crime by shrinking the illegal drugs market. The bill must be approved by the lower house by mid-December to become law. If passed, the bill would mark a change of approach to drugs for the country. Mexico has long struggled with a bloody war against powerful drug cartels, with violence killing tens of thousands of people every year. But public opinion about legalization in Mexico has shifted in recent years, reflecting a growing sentiment in Latin America and elsewhere that the current prohibition on drugs should change. And finally tonight, international news. Pfizer and its partner BioNTech are filing for emergency authorization in the U.S. of their COVID-19 vaccine. It will be the job of the U.S. Food and Drug Administration to decide if the vaccine is safe to roll out. It is not clear how long the FDA will take to study the data. However, the U.S. government expects to approve the vaccine in the first half of December. Data from an advanced trial show the vaccine protects 94% of adults over the age of 65. The trial involved 41,000 people worldwide. 
The UK has pre-ordered 40 million doses and should get 10 million by the end of this year. And that's your News Source Evening Bulletin for tonight and this week. I'm Gordon Mosley reporting. Have a safe weekend.